Hello, I'm Phil Svitek, 360 Creative Coach, and welcome to my vlog, where it's both my mission and my pleasure to highlight my creative journey, to provide you with inspiration, specific takeaways and tactics to apply to your own endeavors, and anything in between. Now, before I get into it, I would like to take the opportunity to invite you to subscribe if you haven't already. That way you get all the various lessons and episodes right when I post them. Thank you if you just did, and thank you if you already were. It truly does mean a lot to me, and I hope it does to you. So, as far as last week, this is more of a check-in rather than like a full vlog, um, because, you know, on the surface, you know, as far as like checking off boxes, not that much got done in terms of the truly creative stuff. You know, there was some maintenance stuff and others that, that I was taking care of. But overall, my biggest uh, goal for last week was to move forward on a new script that I'm working on. And la in last week's episode, I talked about two steps forward, one step back type of approach. And, you know, I did that that weekend or that week. And this past week, what I really did was uh, I, I was just going full steam ahead, you know, um, I was going, I was like, all right, let me just quiet the voice and the negativity and just get, get to the end. And part of, you know, in so doing, I was also doing a lot of research, you know, continuing to watch various movies and documentaries and, and, and read, um, about the subject that I'm writing. And of course, you know, new things kind of kept popping up and, you know, that made me want to slightly alter course and so forth. And as things kept, you know, I kept writing, um, I kept writing in new stuff that would affect stuff earlier on. And I got to about like 85 pages in. I was like, you know what, I could keep going to the end, but the problem is, uh, you know, I'm not going to figure out the ending because all this new stuff that that like has come in and that I want to infuse it with, it's going to affect how we get to the ending. So, you know, <clears throat> excuse me. Now, up until this point, all that stuff is beneficial, uh, but I, I really need to go back in and infuse the new thoughts into the earlier pages. So, you know, I got to page 85, then I went back. So I literally um, started rewriting everything. Um, you know, I kind of have this method where I start with a, a, a blank document and then, you know, the other one, and I kind of use the, the previous one as reference, right? So I'm not just doing everything completely from scratch. I have the other one as reference, but I'm changing up stuff um, as it goes along. And, and then so, you know, some people could say, well, why don't you just do a revision for me in order to really do this. I need to kind of put myself in that mindset and, and like go word by word as I type it out. It just puts me in that state of mind a lot better than just reading something and revising as I go. And so in this process, um, you know, the early stuff is actually pretty good. Um, but now that I have, I have a lot more clarity uh, on a few things, you know, I was, I was thinking about like, in story terms, there's the, um, at the beginning, it's whatever happens, it signals an obligatory scene. You know, the thing that audiences expect to happen, whether they consciously know it or not, um, once they get to it, they're like, it's the inevitable, right? It's, it has to happen. And uh, what happens in the obligatory scene is the final decision must be made. It's where, um, you know, the, the, the meaning of the movie is ultimately revealed and the characters and so forth. And, you know, in order to make it work, you either want two ir ir irreconcilable goods or the lesser of two evils or ideally both at the same time. You know, that's also possible. And that's when, like, that's when movies really take it to the next level and they stand out. And those are the ones that resonate with you. So, you know, I wanted to go back to that, the whole reason of, you know, two steps forward, one step back, the, on the one step back part, I really wanted to be specific in terms of how I set up my obligatory scene. So that way, when I got to it, it made sense and so forth. And, you know, in that way, it has very greatly benefited me because now I have 
such a straightforward vision of what this story is. And, um, you know, you could argue, well, maybe I should have, you know, thought of that during the outline phase and so forth. And I, you know, listen, everyone has a process. And to me, as long as you get the result, and my, my thing is, you know, I could do an outline all day, every day, but I also got to get into the nitty gritty of some of the stuff, you know, uh, what are people saying? How are people acting? And then come up on the roadblocks, be like, ooh, okay, let's let's look at it this way. Let's, you know, and, uh, you know, writing and all art really is, is just an exploration of, you know, what's it look like from here? What's it look like from here? And nothing's ever really done. Um, it's just, you know, when you call it <laughs> ultimately quits or what when the deadline hits, right? Uh, so I've been kind of going in that way. Now, I would... So now with doing this, I'm about 37 pages in, which is great. Um, obviously, I can go pretty fast um, in terms of this because I have uh, somewhat of a skeleton. I, I have that 85 pages as far as a skeleton. And then, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm aiming for 100 pages. So, you know, that means in theory, um, I'll have to kind of invent new stuff. Now, again, it's not... It's, it's not like I'm just revising minor things, you know, there's, it's, it's the details that create sweeping changes. And so already, you know, there, there's a lot of things that have changed much for the better. And so, you know, we'll see how um, this gets me there ultimately. But I think two things as, as far as uh, what, what I, what my kind of ultimate compass is, is um, just keep making it fun. You know, uh, part of the reason towards the end of, you know, in terms of the two steps forward part, um, I, with the 85 pages, it was getting a little bit didactic. Um, and I didn't, you know, and that's because I lost the true sense of, you know, how to get to the obligatory scene and what it was truly about. So, I, you know, by having people say things right on the nose, that, that was a byproduct of that, not knowing and having that clarity. And so now my rule is like, listen, you know, it's, it's not to say that it's comedy or that it's not going to um, hit the issues that it needs to hit. Um, but my rule has been make it fun. Keep making it fun. Just, you know, and you know, the, be the best example I can kind of give as far as this is like Wong Kar Wai movies. There's just a freneticism to his entire style. The writing, the acting, the directing, um, the camera work, uh, the sound, the music, everything, right? And so um, that's the spirit that I really want to channel to make this happen. And it doesn't, and, and you know, what's so crazy, like in describing it, that his movies are so beloved because there's there's such a universality about love and longing and so forth that that it just hits right and yet he makes it fun in spite of what otherwise could be considered deep dark subject matter uh so yeah you know that's kind of how i'm approaching it and and, and wanting to do it that way you know keep keep it fun not it um and and the uh the stuff that has to come out you know will be all the better for it. in fact you know, one of the things as I was kind of, you know, working on that 85 pages, the two steps forward aspect of it, there was just a lot of ideas being introduced left and right. And again, just didactic slash me wanting to overexpress something. And so now with this one step back, what I've, what I've done is as I write, next to me is a sheet of paper and I keep a running list of any references and uh, plot points that come up, you know. And I haven't given myself like an exact like number that, you know, like this is where the cutoff is. Um, but, but it's good to know because that way I don't lose a certain thread. And, you know, I can, within each scene, I can look at that list and be like, okay, you know, what's the scene about and which of these can it help reinforce counterbalance and so forth right and and it's been good to have that because you know i think i don't know um 
before, you know, probably had like 50 things. Now um, I'm at like 15. And so far that feels like a really good number. And some of them, you know, 15, like it's, it's not necessarily the number of things because some of them are intertwined and so forth. Um, but yeah, it just helps me keep that running list so that way, you know, nothing gets lost. Like, imagine, like, when, when you watch a movie, you're like, oh, they, they completely dropped this plot point, right? Um, but I feel like, the, you know, by not knowing all the threads that are kind of interwoven, and, and listen, some of it might be a choice, right? But um, in this sense, um, I don't want it to be a choice. Or I, I want it to very specifically be a choice rather than a mistake of, like, something didn't get followed through or whatever else. And so having this in front of me, really gives me that clarity to keep going. And that's, uh, that's great. Um, so that's kind of what I've been up to, you know, um, there's a whole, and when I talk to my friends, uh, you know, they're like, oh my God, you're do doing X, Y, and Z. That's so cool. And it's funny because I think, you know, for anyone who is actively doing work day in and day out on, on their stuff, you know, we'll get the same sort of praise, right? Um, results will come. And yet, of course, you know, you talk to any of those people, including myself, it's like there's, you know, I could show you a whole list of stuff that I would love to, to get to do, you know, but, um, but in focusing on this script uh, in the past week, it's slowed down the other stuff. In fact, pretty much like made them non-existent last week. Um, but it's that interesting thing. It's, it, you know, it's in writing, or filmmaking in general, people will never see what didn't make the cut, right? They only see what did make the cut. And that's actually a good thing, right? Because what stays is the strong stuff. And so I, I, I kind of look at uh, this being a similar thing. No one's gonna ultimately know and judge you on the things that you aren't doing. They're gonna only judge you based on what you are doing. So that's to your benefit, you know? So. I think we have this habit of beating ourselves up over all the things that we should be doing. When it's like, no, let's praise ourselves for the stuff we are doing. That seems a lot more healthier to me. Um, so yeah, that's kind of what the, what the week's been about um, in, terms of, in terms of last week. Um, there's one other thing that I... I was going to mention, but, for, uh, oh, um, the deadlines, right? So, you know, for me, the reason why I'm so like full force with the script is because, uh, there's a lot that I, I want to kind of, in order to get to where I need to, there's certain deadlines I want to hit and I want to have at least a first draft. So that way I can, you know, all the, the actors are theoretically on board, but I want them to be able to read at least the first draft so then they know what they're getting into. Um, part of that is us trying to raise money and so forth and, and whatever else. And so just having, having a draft to me is very important. Um, and so I'm really like gunning to have this done before June. Like that's my mental deadline. And, um, you know, usually I'll set like weekly deadlines of, you know, like ideally I would have already finished the script and so forth, but it didn't happen, right? But deep down there are certain like end goal deadlines that, you know, I have in my heart of hearts and I don't miss those. So I might miss the benchmarks, but I don't miss the ultimate deadline. So, you know, for example, with um, my first feature film, I wanted to submit it into the Cannes Film Festival. And so everything had to be aligned to be ready for that. And we missed deadline, we missed benchmarks, but we didn't miss that deadline. Um, same thing with um, a short uh, proof of concept called Playtest that I did for In Search of Sunrise, which is the larger feature that um, I would, you know, I would want to make. Um, it's that I had like an April deadline. You know, I, ideally I wanted it to be done earlier than that, um, but it came down to the wire, but we delivered for an April deadline. So with this, you know, I don't have necessarily much time, but, um, but yeah, June approaches and I think, I think I'll be able to pull it off, you know, 
don't mean really focusing on this, but but I think it's doable. And um, yeah, you know, as, as kind of stuff happens, like as we enter into summer, there's gonna be a lot of um, other projects that take my attention. So who knows, we'll see how I do. I might put out just a few lessons a week instead of daily, but we'll see, you know. Um, nothing's been decided yet, but I, as always, I will try to keep this a priority. Um, yeah, but, um, but we'll see. Anyway, that's what I have for you this week. Thank you for taking the time to tune in. I appreciate you. As always, if you have any questions based on anything that I talked about or anything I haven't talked about, by all means, ask away down in the comments section or hit me up on social media at BellSweetTech. Would love to hear from you. Would love to help you in any way that I can. Yeah, um, that's why I do what I do. So thank you, and I'll see you next time.